Hey everybody, this is Carl back again for another TV show spoiler review. And I'm covering season four of the 90s X Men TV show. I gotta say, this by far is my favorite season. Like, it's so much meat in, uh, that's involved in this. Uh, before we get into it, uh, if you be so kind, please uh, like and subscribe uh if you enjoy content like this uh also uh, uh follow me on my uh instagram twitch and twitter uh on name talk uh except my instagram talking of carl um and also check out my patreon uh patreon.com slash talking of carl i also want to once again bring up about uh, if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel already i'm close to my 400 subscriber goal once reached, I will be doing like a Hot Ones Challenge video uh, where I'll be, uh, I'm currently gathering up questions. I want to choose like a set of 10. So once I do the Hot Ones Challenge, uh, I'll give you guys a shout out and try out each of the hot sauces uh, uh, to celebrate the milestone. So like I'm literally 11 subscribers away. So if you haven't subscribed already, or if you know people who might enjoy the content that I bring, Please uh, show them this stuff as well as you can check out my patreon. So if you have certain suggestions uh, Of what kind of reviews that you want me to check out or just a general topic uh, check out the patreon and uh, uh, I'll first uh, uh, Patreon subscribers get first uh, viewing Anyway uh, Yeah, there's so much involved in this I was going to do like a back to back you know season four and five back to back videos but there's so much I want to talk about in this one that I you know I, I don't want to wait but man especially like, this is like a season where they introduced Nightcrawler and there's two good episodes with him and oh my god it's it, it just like thoroughly enjoyable and it's like one hell of an arc for Wolverine but uh yeah but before we get into that you know uh we we get the uh introduction of the storyline about house not house of m but uh asteroid m whereas uh uh playing at the story in the comics where magneto decides okay we had up to here with earth and you uh, uh racist mutant haters out there so we're gonna make a separate place Completely avoiding Earth altogether, where all the moons can live in peace. You stay in your lane, we'll stay in our lane. We don't even have to get into it. It's the, at this point in time, uh, the best course that, because you can say that Xavier's probably, like, at least a little bit getting through with Magneto, where at, at the very least, Magneto's reached to a certain point where it's like, okay, I can't, like, you know, you know, keep going at it with you people. It was like part of like a never ending cycle. Uh, you know, you attack me, I attack you, I attack you, you attack me, and like the X Men interfere or other heroes interfere. All right, fine. Uh, uh, because well, I, I don't believe we can cohabitate any more than you believe we can cohabitate. So I built ha Asteroid M. I'm going to collect all the mutants that want to come with me. And we'll just be off world. You don't want to. We don't have to deal with each other at this point. It's pretty much segregation to the extreme. So, uh, it's almost like you know, you know, having like people like, you know, you know, seven back to where came from kind of attitude. It's like you know having like you know like every black person decide like okay, we had enough with y'all racist crap. So. You know, we're gathering every like black person and we're going right back to, you know, Africa. So you don't mess with us. We won't mess with you. And we'll take everything that is good about us. And we'll take it right along with us. So, but obviously that is like nonsense. That doesn't work either. That doesn't help the cause either. Uh, is Xavier's dream or like Malcolm Max's dream to like peaceful coexistence, not like, you know, separating from each other that doesn't help matters much it is only you know slowly expedite the problem it doesn't fix it uh 
but then you get like this mutant called Fabian Cortez, who is like a um, what do you call it? Uh, 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 uh crap. Like a, a a radical, like that's the word. He's like an extremely radical, where he believe in uh, Magneto's dream to uh, the fullest, where he even. Because even Magneto doesn't just kill indiscriminately. He only, you know, goes after humans if they actually do harm or if he serves a, a bigger cause. He doesn't just, he's not a serial killer. He doesn't just do it on a whim. This guy, you know, just want to like completely just annihilate whether they're guilty or innocent, just annihilate humans altogether. It's all mutants or all uh, or nothing. Uh, so he because uh, he has the power to amplify a mutant's ability or uh, diminish it but he, when he, if he amplifies it he can choose to make it addictive like a drug and uh, that's what pretty much he did with Magneto and you know uh, put him on a uh, uh, uh Kind of like a uh, what do you call those like uh, those um, escape pod kind of situations. They have it like you know, send it blasted off in the middle of space because now Xavier's power is getting so diminished is he's starting to feel like he's fading away. So while Beast Gambit and Professor X are on asteroid M because they they want to incite Magneto thinking like they're in for a fight no you just want to talk so it's like okay let's scope out this place see what it's about because you know the uh, the president and other nations of the world are weary on a possible attack given Magneto's history why wouldn't they so Xavier go to like kind of like quell any kind of uh 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 a worriness of the situation so now uh, Cortez is, you know, uh, getting people, putting a bunch of the mutants against, pitting them against Xavier and his people. They're like, oh, he, they, you know, killed Xavier. I mean, they, they killed Magneto, you know, you know, get at him. Of course, thanks to Gambit, he has Beast and uh, Xavier go out on an escape pod. Uh, and so now they're gathering up the other X-Men and taking the X-Jet uh, to space, you know, because uh, since Magneto has onboard uh, nuclear weapons uh, in case there is an attack from uh, uh, from Earth, they can easily launch a counterattack if they you know, he so chooses to. He even has, like, you know, some uh, human people working on board to, like, you know, help uh, maintain things so he's not devoid of just outright just you know eradicating humans on a whim he's like only if uh yeah if yeah very Michael Max things like you know like hey if they do harm to us then like, hey you know then it's free game at that point but if they don't like I, I ain't you know it was like uh uh if you don't start nothing won't be nothing kind of attitude so uh, uh, you know, Xavier and Beast with those humans on board to you know make sure they don't end up getting murdered by this mob. Uh, you know they all come back. They neutralize some of the rockets, but once one of Charles's old flames who uh, helped him nurse him uh, to health after he lost the use of his legs in the war, she was immune too with like a power to turn herself into uh like a gaseous state uh she you know just uh xavier wanted like uh to like learn about the well, at least not learn i mean trying to establish a peaceful like building the x-men to try to uh uh dream of cohabitation between humans and mutants and all the other stuff and she just want to have like a peaceful life she doesn't want to be getting involved 
but uh she in a way got involved when she started working for this cortez dude not realizing this dude was a complete radical uh she finds out the truth thanks to gambit's uh 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 talking she finds the tape she shows it to everybody and everybody turned on cortez my needle survived because he you know once he the the pod he was on careens towards earth because the magnetic fields of earth powers him it rejuvenates him uh and then he comes right back not only to destroy asteroid m because it's sullied at this point he also uh stopped uh uh cortez uh then um uh uh, we get a return of Morph, who's still suffering a bit of PTSD from the events of being blasted by one of those Sentinels, but not one to admit that he is uh, uh, not ready to be back on the field yet. Uh, uh, he goes in prematurely. And I don't care for like Morph's voice actor. And that stupid laugh he has, it, it drives me freaking nuts. It's like, <laughs> that, 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 that gets on my freaking nuts. I do not like it. Uh, but um, Morph, you know, his ability is like, uh, 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 it could be OP as hell. Uh, uh, uh his, his ability just to be uh specific uh he's composed of unstable molecules which gives him the ability to shape shift his powers seem to only be limited by his great imagination and sense of humor he can transform his bodies this is comic by the way to transform his body parts and natural mimic of voices and sounds uh he can change the chemical composition of his body into gas or a solid uh, he also change color, stress, contract, extort, compress, and expand his body, or give himself virtually any superhuman physical power. Uh, 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 but in the show, Morph, you think his ability is like uh, limited to something like mystique where it's, she can shape shift too but the difference is uh at least in um oh well hold on a second uh i think i read the wrong thing hold on uh morphs uh ability uh fuses looks with anyone else not becoming that person but close a duplicate in both appearance and sound uh because you know for a time morph was limited to the tv show but you know over time he became part of the uh comics uh uh Bezman also has the unique ability to cause someone to to like him and trust him this chemical influence allows others to feel good smooth calm pleasant and relaxed uh uh techno chemical dis disruption uh chemicals can also be used to scramble technological electronic devices that kind of thing. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, um, so yeah, in the show, in the episode, you see him transforming into like Sasquatch, Omega Red, uh, the old school angel before he became Archangel, and utilizing their uh, abilities. Um, 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 making him a little bit more formidable than Mystique, who can only change, you know, forms, but not mimic the their powers. So you, you can see like why Morph came, came and asked me he's not just used for like distraction like you see him like a few times he went out there like 
overcoming his fear against these sentinels who Massimo, Mastermo was slightly back because his head still survived and functioning and sending the sentinels after Trask, uh, uh, Xavier, and um, uh, uh, a, 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 a person who employed Trask, uh, I forgot his name, who these two were in hiding because after the events of Brandy Sentinels, who was going to go after not only Kelly, but a bunch of humans because they were labeled, because that's how Kelly have a change of heart after hearing Massimo in season one, I believe, you know, state that, you know, in its query or understanding on uh, mutants are human. So by definition that we need to destroy all of you. So they kind of give him a unique perspective. Like, no, this is the like computer says, like you designate you guys as like human, uh, by biological wise then okay then i I guess you know stop my prejudices so uh uh you know trash and the other guy was out in hiding but the sentinels uh went after them and Massimo was you know playing on uh putting xavier's brain and merging it with him so he can be like the most you know powerful you know sentinel in the world but thanks to morph put a stop to all that but morph still wasn't ready so he goes back to more metaga so he can uh complete his uh 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 therapy sessions uh but the nice little turnaround with morph and him going over that hump with the whole situation with uh sinister and him dying for a bit um oh uh then we get like the awesome episode when the first introduction of nightcrawler in this and kudos to the voice actor involved this episode is probably my favorite episode the entire uh season four honestly but i love the season four as a whole but man this episode really i think i, I didn't appreciate it as a young kid because i'm not like super religious like that i am a christian i do believe in god but i'm not like super religious like that i can't quote every bible verse or anything like that or i don't uh uh go to church every sunday or anything like that but this really kind of hits home for wolverine because wolverine got like an impressive arc starting here uh leading into uh the episode with um uh, the return of the Weapon X program situation. Yeah, f- from you know these points, uh, there's like a you know arc that Wolverine is definitely on that we'll get into soon. But you know, of course, kudos to like the you know the genes of uh, Stan Lee creating Nightcrawler, or at least I think it was Len Wing who created Nightcrawler, where it's like heck of an ironic uh, thing to put together where somebody who looks very demonic turns out to be the most pious religious person uh uh and he actually had been a priest for a time and he's kind of still like a you know religious kind of person i mean i'm not sure if he still like qualifies qualifies himself as like a uh a priest but i'm pretty sure he still has like a certificate to certify him as like a priest so he can still conduct marriages and all the other stuff uh but he just kind of brought that a little bit into uh Krakoa currently but uh nightcrawler is just like you know uh he, he's like staying in his monastery and hiding from because the, these the villagers near the uh the monastery uh you know are are like freaked out by this you know because it's supposed to like a rumored demons roaming the streets and everything like that uh not sure why he exit of course he probably don't want to be cooped up in the monastery he wants to probably get out but kind of crazy how he got caught so easily but um rogue wolverine and gambit are on like a ski trip in Germany and they get wind about this supposed demon and Wolverine's getting kind of restless and he want to head over and see what's up. But, uh, 
trying to ski over there you know the accidental avalanche that you know had uh got gambit uh a bed ridden a little bit just to recoup but they meet up with this supposed demon and the head monk of the monastery introduces kurt to uh these three uh x-men and uh, uh, him and uh, wolverine and kurt get i want to say like, more so wolverine try to get into it with uh kurt about like you know god and faith and wolverine personally trying to hear it if you know anything about wolverine's history all his life he hasn't really got any reason to believe in a god because you know you know as i, mean, I pulled it up here because it's like uh it's awesome uh thing where he's like you know trying to challenge kurt about and this episode really because not many cartoons especially back then really want to like delve too much into you know christianity like that because you know you know certain faith believers you know uh uh kind of either some people might roll their eyes because it's leaning too hard in it uh, into it or the super religious people will be up in arms it's like you know for whatever reason it's not you know adhering to the power of faith or it feels like blasphemous in some kind of way but kudos for just you know uh staying true and really touching on this they don't shy away from using the words like god or hell or whatever and you know, uh, so Wolverine keeps trying to push back on him because, like, why would you uh, believe in a guy that you know has people hate you for the way you look? Like, look at you, look at us, uh, kind of thing. And you know, uh, 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 I put up like certain lines from the episode here because I don't want to mince words because I freaking love this episode. It's really good because I might end up rolling my eyes at certain things like this when. You know, certain writers might make this kind of corny, cringy, or hackneyed, where it's like you can you can be easily lazy by giving like, oh, he he's like a religious person, oh, uh, religion, 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 blah blah blah, words, 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 and like we're done, right? It it, it feels hollow and, and, and not sincere. It, I would feel the same way if they did something like that with Reed Richards, like, oh, he's the science guy, oh, science, science, babble, babble, words we're done right and it doesn't have any substance to it that's like it feels hollow you gotta uh you know it, it has to feel earned you gotta put some effort into it and it made it fit in the context of the story that you're trying to tell and then people who are reading this will feel the sincerity coming through off the page if you give a damn uh so uh what is it uh wolverine refusing to believe in a god who could let bad things happen to good people uh 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 uh, uh, uh wolverine says god gave up on us a long time ago nightcrawler says god does not give up on his children uh he is there for us in times of joy and when we are in pain if we let him uh uh and Wolverine's like, don't tell me about God. What kind of God would let a man do this to me? And he shows him his claws. And uh, Nightcrawler uh, puts, you know, uh, tells him like, our ability to understand God's purpose is limited, but we take comfort in the fact that His love is limitless. Uh, uh, and, and, oh my God! It, it, and it's like, like I said. And there's another episode with Nightcrawler that really challenged him in terms of his parentage that I'll get to soon. But th that's why I said this is not hackneyed. This is not half ass. It shows that Kurt is still human. You know, not to put a final point on it. Uh, he's still human. He still faces adversity and challenges uh, towards uh, him and his faith, where it's like, you know, uh, uh when you find out his, his mother is mystique and what she did in terms, in terms of abandoning him as a baby he you know some people might if they being lazy like you know oh he's religious so he'll of course he'll just forgive her no he understand the realism on the situation that 
he, he's not going to ignore his feelings. He is upset. You know, understandably upset that his mother so callously, of course, he doesn't understand because Mystique put on that stern, you know, ball up and not being vulnerable in a time that it probably should be vulnerable, especially with your own children. You know, uh, saying like, you know, I didn't care. Clearly, she does care because you, you see her turn around and actually cry. The fact that, you know, you know, she she did what she did, probably out of desperation thinking like well i'd rather him die by my hand rather than by this unforgiving mob uh, it, in her eyes like you can say is the less of her in her point of view two evils kind of situation but it still hurt nonetheless and the fact that he survived you know she didn't want to take that moment to say you know i'm sorry or, or just like i said be vulnerable she just like put that wall right back up and of course, Kurt in this moment is hurt. Uh, and it's like, like I it pretty much like he can't forgive her at this point. Like he just trusts in God to give him the strength to for, forgive, forgive her and give him the strength to forgive her later kind of situation. But at this point, he's not there yet kind of situation that gives him layers and hu hu human vulnerabilities. He's not exempt from that you know despite his religious uh nature uh uh and then of course uh this other member of the monastery who thinking like kurt is truly a demon he's not understanding about like you know mutants or he just consider mutants to be abominations and everything like that and then ensuing fight trying to get like a mob being led by this i guess officer of the law in germany but kind of dresses up like m bison from street fighter tried to incite a mob to attack kurt in the monastery and in the ensuing fight causes like a, a a fire and kurt saves him from falling over and you know he, he's astonished like you saved me uh, but like you know i you know called you a demon i did all this and kurt points out to him it's like it's not my place to judge you but look at what you wrought dear brother you know uh uh you know you know, you know what judgment you think god's gonna put on you this is your works not mine and uh at the end of the episode like uh kurt hands uh 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 wolverine a bible and he marked a certain uh, passages that he feels that it will benefit Wolverine because he, you know, he he's a, a straight lamb who lost his way because I guess you know because like, you know life was so hard he lost his faith in uh, God and it's uh, a passage from uh, Isaiah twelve one and I I wanted to pull this up I didn't want to mince words here. And like I said, I didn't appreciate this as a kid because I understand the the uh, emotion behind it, but I didn't really fully like you know like let it sit with me like that as well. But as an adult, this is a perfect way to end an episode where it's like Rogue passes by Wolverine while they in Paris to finish up their vacation. She passes by a church and and sees Wolverine inside, in you know, kneeling before the cross and uh reading the passages uh and, and it's like it, it brought tears to her eyes and honestly it choked me up a little bit i didn't cry but it did, did choke me up. i was like that is a perfect way to end like an episode here's the uh uh the uh, verse the lord is my strength and my song you will say in that day i will give you thanks to you O lord for though you were angry with me your anger turned away that you might come from me behold god is my salvation i will trust and will not be afraid for the lord god is my strength and my song and he has become my salvation with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation and you will say in that day give thanks to the lord call upon his name make known his deeds among the peoples proclaim that his name is exalted sing praises to the lord for he has done gloriously let this be made known in all the earth shout 
and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One, Israel. And of course, uh, they only you know showed like uh, parts of it, but I want to read the entire whole thing. And God, it, it was like what a way to end the episode. That was my favorite episode, and uh, kudos to the way they made uh, Nightcrawler in this and how he fit into these two stories. Um. Uh. And of course, we get a return of, uh, 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 Grand Grand and Creed. Um. Uh. Did I get that name right? Uh, well, well, Grand and Creed, who, um. Uh, is getting uh, pushed out of the hum- uh, friends against humanity, you know, group, the mutant hating group, and it's because especially after they found out about his lineage with him being the son of Victor Creed, a known mutant, uh, they also found out about his uh, relations with Mystique being his mother, and also the brother of Nightcrawler. He's like the little brother of Nightcrawler. And he like, you know, from the episode when he freaked out and had a meltdown when everybody, he was outed as the son of the most vicious mutant in the world. He, you know, he just had like a huge breakdown. And so he's trying to uh, get in good with them again by trying to, uh, you know, uh, ax the, uh, uh, his own mother and, his adopted sister rogue and his brother nightcrawler and of course it all fails and and they didn't they don't try to execute him they just send him they dissed him in the front doorstep of victor creed and uh you see in the weapon x uh program episode where you learn a little bit about uh creed he had an abusive father himself, and so it's kind of like hurt people, hurt people. So now, a fully grown Victor is, you know, abuse is gonna he's gonna abuse his own son now, even though he's a full grown adult. He's, I imagine that, you know, Grandin, you know, had this severe hatred of mutants because he grew up in this kind of house household of Victor Creed, which is, is a horrible. I can't imagine a horrible situation if this. You talking about a cycle of violence, Whew, Jesus! And now it's like it's probably even, even worse because I'm pretty sure it wasn't lost on Victor on what kind of crap his son got into as far as like mutant hating. And it's like, oh well, it's like, oh, welcome home, boy. Uh, man, it, it makes you feel bad, but you know, not as much, but a little bit because you know, being abused by. Saber to is probably like you know one of the worst things you probably could experience. Uh, um, but you also get a nice little moment between Nightcrawler and Jubilee, who's tagged onto this uh adventure trying to find his mother, and uh, she tells him about like you know, you know, what if, you know, uh, what would you say to your mother? She abandoned you, like um, uh. You know, I went through foster care and like it, and, and like you know, not many people wanted me. It's, and it's like he he, tried, he comforting uh, Jubilee, and it's, that's a moment with him and Jubilee where he's trying to like, you know, uh, comfort her. Like I, I don't have the like is that quote pulled out right now, but it's just like that little next little moment between comforting her, let her know that you know God is with us. It's like you know, you know, we're all children. Uh, uh, under him, so even though you don't know your biological parents, because like they died in like a car accident, and her biological parents, uh, from going remembering correctly from Jubilee's bio, uh, but you know you through God you end up finding a family in the X Men. They're your brothers and sisters, and, and they're your family. They care for you. They look after you. And so it's your foster parents because I clearly they didn't kind of like uh they seem to glossing over that times when you don't see jubilee you assume that she's probably with her foster parents uh 
uh, it was a nice little moment with there, with with that. Uh, and then Logan, uh, you know, still going through like some uh, uh, growing pains himself because you know, uh, there was an episode uh, where uh, it was a two part episode where Mormon Taggart. Uh, had a, a son named Kevin, who, you know, uh, uh, you know, she at first was engaged in this in- interpretation, engaged to Xavier before he went off to war and before he lost the use of his legs, uh, was you know promised to wed, but she ended up uh, falling for another. I guess he didn't want to wait until he gets back from the war. It was kind of weird that you know to do that to Charles like that. Uh, but she she met another. She ended up having a kid. He left her. Kid turned out to be a mutant. She ended up you know establishing a relationship with in this version establishing a relationship with a mutant banshee, and the kid had like a reality warping. Uh, kind of powers and of course he's 17 and he's been cooped up you know not allowed to because he couldn't properly control his powers like that Uh, and so he doesn't know what's going on on the outside world despite what his mother tried to tell him what's going on but she's trying to make sure she's trying to shield him because she she doesn't want him to put himself in danger considering how there's moon hating people outside in the world and with his reality warping power, she doesn't want him to cause potential harm for for anybody else. But he freaks out. He wants to you know where's his father, and so she ends up getting Charles and his X Men involved. And he he doesn't you know he he only uh, attacks when he's feeling attacked. And when the X Men tried to get themselves involved, Wolverine in particular. Is is very the anime is really like uh, had a probably had a ball with the animation and this two parter because with reality warping you can just do whatever you want you turn a bunch of buildings in a city into like you know very warped Legos and when Wolverine tried to block his path he you know you know twisted the world around well he's twisted Wolverine around like Play-Doh but in his point of view the whole world is kind of like twisting all over the place and when Kevin was out of the general vicinity Wolverine went back to normal and this is the first time you actually see Wolverine like crying in a fetal position begging to the please stop please stop it's like Wolverine is like always like the you know the, the, the epitome of badassness but this is the first time, at least in this iteration, this is the first time he actually felt fear. He he was like legitimately like afraid. And this, you know, this paralyzing fear is like, you know, getting at him uh, to the point where he doesn't even want to combat this kid. He doesn't even, until the tail end where he's like, despite, it's kind of like, you know, with Green Lantern, it's like, you know, it's not the absence of fear that makes you worthy of the ring. It's, you know, doing what you have to in spite of the fear. And that's what you see Wolverine towards the second part is like, despite his fear, he's stepping up to like, you know, uh, try to calm down this kid when he just want to find his father. And thanks with uh, Professor X, he finally got through to the kid and finally, you, you know, this guy who seems kind of a bit of a, a mutant racist finally had this guy talk with his son talk to your son he needs his father talk to your son and he finally you know had to sit down with his son and, and like finally calm things down uh uh it's a very intense two-part episode but this carries on to the episode where uh wolverine's still feeling the effects of what happened to him through this adventure where he's kind of flipping out on people unnecessarily like he's on a drive with uh jubilee and some kid cut him off in traffic he got out 
the car and rip the door off and he's about to claw this kid well uh, julie tried to hold him back and he knocks her to the side and it leads into uh uh him sitting down with xavier it's like i gotta leave the x-men like i almost killed this kid for just cutting me off in traffic and like i almost took uh, jubilee's head off uh uh and i didn't care i did not care uh even animals care and and it's like something was wrong with me. I, I need to center myself. I need, I need to get out of here. As, and so he goes off to try to find himself. He goes back to Japan where it, last time he helped him center himself, trying to like, you know, uh, find a humanity or at least some kind of balance between him and the animal. And he just wants to avoid violence. He doesn't want to, he, he want to kind of live like the monks at the monasteries. He just want to find peace you know he, he doesn't want to be involved with violence anymore he had it uh, uh but then he gets involved with the silver samurai who's running this kind of backer gang who's trying to you know do the whole uh mafia thing where he's trying to like uh you know uh you pay us otherwise you know we'll come back and uh break some stuff kind of situation and Jubilee, of course, follows because she feels guilty, thinking like she's like, this is part of like, I didn't really care for Jubilee. Of course, she's a teenager, but she thinks like, not everything's about you, kid, but she thinks he's the blame for Wolverine from uh, uh, leaving. Don't know, see how, but uh, he gets involved in this, even though he doesn't want to, but it kind of harkens to something that Nightcrawler said that the this uh, monk uh, on his uh, Japanese monastery said to him that you know you know sometimes uh, God, I don't, I forget, I'm miss, uh, like I'm jumbling up the words a bit but it's pretty much like you know uh, sometimes peace you know comes from having to do having to step up essentially and uh fight what you what you for what you believe in and sometimes you know peace comes through acts what you probably will call violence but probably like righteous violence or righteous anger and not just kind of like a wildfire situation it's like if you know how to direct it it can be used to benefit others rather than just all out mayhem and chaos uh and so he, he helps you know fight off the silver samurai while the villagers handle the biker games on their own he doesn't just fight everybody he handles what the others could not handle on their own and he does not lay any kind of fatal blow he help he retains his humanity by uh holding back from dealing a fatal blow he's like i did what i need to do i stopped you you know i showed everybody they don't have to be afraid of you so you're beaten everybody will know that they don't have to be afraid of you you lost your power so i don't need to do anything more that shows the strength of wolverine uh but it also leads into the you know episode with weapon x where uh wolverine silver fox uh saber tooth and uh maverick or agent zero aka agent zero are plagued by you know memories from the weapon x program they have all been drawn to the old facility and beast is tagging along and the uh person behind it dr cornelius who bonded wolverine his bones to the adamantium uh it was pretty much like a kind of like a trap you know, you know uh they learn because uh, there's this like robot you know that's set up to recapture them and uh erase their memories again to be turning them again into uh weapons uh but thanks to beast put a stop to all that but you also learn that they you know the program planted false memories into their minds but some weren't false like the relationship wolverine had with silver fox uh uh was real because the cabin they supposed to have their uh life in had like uh their names etched into it 
the fake cabin that they saw in this uh facility you know turned out to be fake thinking that it was the whole relationship was fake turns out like no this part wasn't fabricated some of the stuff was not fabricated because you know this fake cabin does not have our names etched into it so not all of it was fake uh but you also learn a little bit about like uh Sabretooth's little background that i mentioned earlier where he was pretty much beaten by his own father where as he's a kid and because of the way he looked his father you know called him like a beast and an animal which led into why he just embraced the animal fine you think i'm an animal i'm just gonna be the animal that you people say i am uh and you see him like with like a big stick and he clearly was about to beat saber tooth as a kid and you hear saber tooth as a kid it's like you know please daddy no i'll be good and you see like present day saber tooth was in the fetal position crying is the first time you see saber tooth in this kind of you know uh position where he's crying it's like i'll be good i'll be good it's the first time you actually feel something kudos to the writers and the voice actor it's like you for the first time probably ever you feel sorry for Sabretooth and I didn't cover the first episode in the season where you know he got Juggernaut got his powers uh unknowingly stripped from him because of some other archaeologist who's trying to uh, find the crimson uh powers of the Sidorak to uh gain power so he can not seem like a dork and ostracized so because he equates to muscles and to confidence and 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 complaining power to woo the ladies and get respect but it comes from within so he ends up learning that but that's not really important but you see this kind of heart to heart you know xavier has with the juggernaut a deep power juggernaut and of course because even though they're stepbrothers which the movie should have leaned into that instead of making you know mystique like the adoptive sister or what have you you learn here which i'm pretty sure that's proper in the comics that uh xavier's mother uh married this guy who was king marco's father who only married her for wealth uh and of course he pretending to like xavier to uh make sure they gain everybody's you know him and the mother's trust but of course marco feeling jealous that his father's pinned all this time into xavier shows why he constantly bullied and want to be antagonist towards xavier because he was jealous he's pretty much like biff from back to the future he just never want to let up and uh uh so xavier learns through k marco's mind why he behaved that way and now that he knows this secret that only uh kane and his father knew it it hurts him to his core but it's like you know why is you you learn a lot from xavier's past here like uh two of his ex-lovers you know fell out of love with him uh one didn't really believe in his dream and want to pursue this kind of life with him and uh and his own supposed family who thought was one way turns out to be another and it's like it it stands the reason why like you know he has these moments in you know one episode when it's like a dark part of his mind escape and try to do harm and this other episode where uh uh he gets you know his mind gets taken over by the shadow king because he's in a fragile state you know you know causing his mind to start attacking members of the x-men using their fears against them uh so you there's really ain't no solid uh xavier center comic like they should be because you really can play into this and they should have really leaned into like an onslaught story because honestly this is why you have like stories like onslaught where xavier's repressed dark side just comes in full flourish and it's like it, it's like you know he, it's something that he just doesn't have a sit down to deal with 
because he's always there for others and it's very rare he actually had like a moment to have somebody listen to him and his problems and let things get off his chest but he always got to be the, that rock that pillar for everybody else to lean on but every once in a while he needs even therapists need a therapist in a way if that makes sense and he could have probably benefit from like uh, some good therapy to kind of uh, alleviate some burden off his shoulders so he can be uh, a better rock for everybody else. Um, so he had like a like nice little heart to heart with, cause everybody's stunned at the fact that, you know, you know, uh, him being depowered is like, no, save him. That's like, are you, are your minds came Marco the juggernaut? Like, this is not a request, this is an order. Save my brother. He still considered him as his brother, just like he still considered Magneto his friend. Despite everything, he sees these people as still humans and in still need of care. It's gonna show the like the integrity of Xavier. Despite what people like like to say in comic book fans like to say about Xavier in the comments, like, oh, he's like, you know, he make decisions that seems like, you know, bad for his character. And something like he's making decisions that's only best at, sometimes that's best that he might not like, but it's probably better than an alternative at the moment. It's not something that he probably will be any other circumstances he will rightly choose. But it, like, I'd be more willing to cut Xavier some slack here and there rather than, you know, because it just depends on the writer. You know, it's the writer's fault, not Xavier. You all know how Xavier is at his core of his, you know, you know, origins. He's just every so often certain writers come in and they want to do certain things to fit the certain narrative. Doesn't mean Xavier is like a full on bad guy because he made certain decisions you would not make, but it doesn't mean that Xavier probably won't make it depending on the circumstance. So Xavier wants to give back the powers of the Sidorak to the Juggernaut because without the powers because he had it for so long he his body's acclimated to it so now without it he will start slowly dying so they end up getting the powers back to k marco and without saying anything marco was like you know because you know everybody's getting at the ready for a fight and you know you know uh jargon like another time show stuff i don't i'm not in the mood and he walks out of the building and I like the final line with uh, uh, with Xavier, who points out to Wolverine and the others, like, you know, that, you know, he could have engaged us in battle, but he chose not to. That's his part of his way of saying thank you. It's like, you know, it's like, you know, like, I won't crush you this day because you gave me something back. So it's like, it, we're even on this one. I'll come back. Don't make no mistake. I will be back, but uh, it's like I'll give you a reprieve for a while. But then it's like uh, things wrap up in this season with. Uh, uh, oh wait a minute! Before we get into like the last four parts uh, with Apocalypse, I want to cover like the Christmas episode because you know uh, Wolverine's being like a Scrooge and everything like that, and. You know, this is Jubilee's first Christmas with the X Men, and they find out that the Morlocks are, you know, robbing a, a ambulance because Leech is sick, and you know, uh, uh, Jubilee, Storm, and Wolverine go to the Morlock tunnels, and because Storm, they, you know, uh, Calypso chastises Storm because even though she's supposed to be the leader of the Morlocks, she ain't always here. Uh, uh, so, uh, she later eventually turned that leadership over to Calypso because she knows she can't always be here to watch over everybody. But because it was also with a claustrophobia, she can't be on the ground. But, uh, Leech, you know, isn't feeling well, I guess, because he's been out, like, you know, trying to scavenge some stuff for more like to celebrate Christmas. And of course, they gotta. They really lean into the decoriness of like certain Christmas elements, like that whole Charlie Brown ugly tree thing they got in the tunnels. And then even with the whole their own version of our Tiny Tim type of person with this little uh, more like girl who's just all green, don't know even what her powers is. Probably the powers of doughy eyedness because she got that super cartoony doughy eye look. 
that they really want to hammer home and jubilee is comforting her because she's teared up because this little boy leech is sick practically on his like deathbed and she you know asks the little girl do you believe in miracles and like, what are miracles and and jubilee we we're about to find out because uh because since like wolverine has been like a battle tested like uh you know field medic before he quickly checks because they don't have any kind of medical facilities at the ready and wolverine dinos like yeah he, he's not looking too great and i don't think it's a good idea for us to move him because the, the way the weather is uh even though storm can control the weather and make it nice but still like it's still cold out and it's not gonna be good for herself and he won't make it to a hospital you know in his condition so they get they call in uh beast with some medical supplies from the uh the xavier institute to bring over uh to help things along but then they come with an idea well wolverine since you because it's always been like a thing. I won't say always a thing, but there's always there's been times from my memory is very rare, but it's because it doesn't always be brought up that since Wolverine has a super healing factor, is it possible that that blood could help speed things along with other people with like a blood transfusion? But then you go in the in in the weeds about like well. That shouldn't work because about well, blood types it doesn't really because one by his blood type is b and the other like is an a negative they probably won't mesh well but they ain't getting through all that i guess but they raise the question could your blood possibly help you know, leech along with the healing process and wolverine says like you're not <laughs> because wolverine's hesitant because he knows from his past that because like, he says like you don't know what you're asking because it's been raised up in my past before and it's only he said worked only once or twice but many other times when he tries to make that work in the past previously early on it never worked possibly because it probably doesn't have like the right blood type more than likely but it, it's it, it's a it's, it's like a, a toss-up you, you don't know if it actually will work and uh, it because Wolverine's acting like a total screws on this holiday, but this is you know him learning to like appreciate miracles in this joyous holiday and thinking of somebody other than yourself. Uh, Beast shows up, helps things along, and of course, uh, Leech you know wakes up miraculously, uh, and uh, they end up celebrating Christmas with the Morlocks here. It is a very nice, wholesome episode. I can do without the doughy-eyed, tiny Tim kid, because that, that you're you're pushing that wholesomeness to cringiness, in my opinion. Uh, uh, so it, it's a cool episode. And then you get this kind of weird thing with uh, in the kitchen with Jean Grey and Gambit butting heads over in the kitchen about like, you know, uh, Jean. Because like, I'm the only one who's cooks in this house. You keep your occasion slot to yourself, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, Jesus, I've never seen that side of Gene this before. You know, outside of like, you know, uh, Phoenix. They're very protective of that kitchen for some doggone reason for this particular, you know, for she always cooks the Christmas meal and, uh, you know, you know, I guess Gambit's kind of horning in on her territory. It's like, ooh, Jesus, okay, fine. Uh, but it was a very nice episode. But then everything ties up with uh, Apocalypse coming back, kidnapping a bunch of psychics. You get a return of Angel, Cable, Bishop, and an uh, introduction of Psylocke here, where Apocalypse is and Bishop is in this kind of uh, nexus uh, situation, like a uh, time beyond time, like, you know, outside of time and bishop runs into this little imp guy who i argue i like to think that is kang which is kind of ironic considering the current mcu kang is the overall bad guy here and i don't care what anybody says i hope uh J jonathan majors continues on from being 
continues on in being Kang the Conqueror and doesn't get dropped out of that role. I don't want anybody talking about like recasting him because I don't think you know Disney wants to recast him. They want everything played out because everything seems to be leaning in Jonathan Major's favor. So fingers crossed he continues on being uh Kang the Conqueror. But that little imp turns out in the end of the you know four parter, you know, looks like one of the three immortus i think it's supposed to be immortus i like to think character uh of being kang uh but uh yeah so what apocalypse is planning is kidnapping you know the world's even like you know like uh one of uh the cr empire's greatest psychics you know the I mean, the best psychics to because you know, he learns through this nexus that, you know, all the time is somehow tied with like, because the powerful is psychics are in tuned with like, uh, you know, seeing beyond the barriers of time and space, being able to access certain things, you know. So he collect, you know, he's trying to kidnap, he's kidnapping Gene, he, he later kidnaps Xavier, he, he kidnaps like uh, uh, Psylocke and a bunch of other uh, powerful psychics. But, you know, uh, He's teaming up with Mystique, Mr. Sinister, Magneto, and Sabretooth in order to uh, uh, kidnap these psychics. And uh, Cable is getting involved because, you know, in his time, he's trying to uh, finally put a stop to uh, Apocalypse by... Uh, uh destroying what's essentially this version of like his uh you know those Lazarus pits that uh Raz al Ghul dips in to rejuvenate himself is essentially something like uh that that Apocalypse uses to rejuvenate himself every 100 years uh to keep his power and in his, in his time Cable finally finds one in Egypt in his time and he he's destroying it but in order to uh, finally nip it in the bud to, so he won't be continuously fighting every rebellion across time in the future, Apocalypse decides, okay, I'm going to uh, control all the time. So anytime I'm rejuvenating myself, I can always go back in time uh, to any point with my uh, little uh, palace to rejuvenate myself way before it gets destroyed and so i can always control and be anywhere and all at once uh everywhere all at once uh uh <laughs> the only thing like i really complain about is just the lack the the amount of time bishop spends with this imp guy or kang essentially uh uh you know, bickering with him and waiting on the sidelines until like the final episode where he releases uh, all the psychics from their prison. And Cable teams up with the X Men to track down Apocalypse, who's, you know, traveling through time because he stole Cable's time device. That's how he ends up in the Nexus because him and Bishop kind of bump into each other along the way after la the last Bishop appearance. Uh, and so, uh, Magneto and Mystique turn against uh, Sinister and Apocalypse once he realized because he's not, because of course, Apocalypse, a guy who names Apocalypse and Sinister, you think they ever gonna hold up their end of the deal, but Magneto just want to see what they're really gonna do. So, of course, he releases, uh, Logan from being captured by Apocalypse and they all you know Mystique, Magneto, Wolverine uh, uh, Bishop uh, Cable all team up to release all the psychics and fight back uh, Sinister and Apocalypse and thanks to Bishop releasing all the psychics it was like an awesome moment where like every powerful psychic at least those that we saw you know along the way throughout the first four seasons with some extras one of them being moon dragon but you only see like a little blip of her uh all you know, since they're in this nexus their power is 
amplified tenfold and a uh, f uh force apocalypse into like a you know uh outside of time and space where he cannot uh well no no they didn't force him outside they put him back to where since his uh uh thing is destroyed he will cease to exist immediately because cable destroyed his access to rejuvenate himself now that is gone he cannot time travel to like go into a previous event so he's stuck so he's going to disappear so that's the end of him uh there's a nice little four-parter it's like a uh, really great uh like i said season four was my by far my favorite but the episodes with nightcrawl is probably like the uh top tier favorite episodes honestly it's really good but uh i highly recommend season four but like of course check out the first few seasons to catch up but yeah season four uh i want to know if you guys would agree it's probably like the honestly the best season but what you think about the episodes with nightcrawler whether you believe in god or not like you know honestly just look at the episode in and of itself and the story and everything involved how would you feel because i'm too curious you know to know what you guys think uh but anyway that is season four i'm going to be covering uh, i'm going to be binge, binging season five pretty soon we're going to learn a little bit about the phalanx which is like a part of the lore of the x-men we'll cover that you know once i get around to that probably uh if not later in the week early next week and that'll be it for 90s x-men story then i'll be going into the next x-men tv show which be which will be X-Men Evolution and going through all those seasons. Uh, then after that, it'll be Wolverine and the X-Men and they'll be like wrapping up all the X-Men TV shows. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, stay tuned. Uh, in a little bit, I will be covering uh, another comic book review uh, starring uh, Bishop, his first miniseries. So look forward to that. I'll cover Bishop's powers and covering this particular story. Anyway, I will see you all soon. Take care. Uh, be well.